Colonel, I'm entering Volcano Manor. Can you give me a description of the target? His name is Rikard, Snake. They call him the Lord of Blasphemy. In an effort to destroy the Erd Tree, he allowed himself to become the meal of the God-Devouring Serpent. They're now one entity, consuming those that serve them to gather more power. Wait, that means to beat him, I'll need to become a Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. When it comes to the longest ladder in video games, there is one master, Hideo Kojima and his legendary ascent in Metal Gear Solid 3. But there is another who would give Kojima a rung for his money. While Miyazaki never has a ladder quite as intense as the Snake Eater one, he steps things up with a higher quantity of climbing fun. So what's better, quantity or quality? Some may prefer the former, but I prefer the latter. On my quest to find the most fun build in Elden Ring, I decided to make a snake, purely because it would justify singing the Snake Eater theme every time I climbed a ladder. If you want to sing along with me, follow me on Twitch. Give me money on Patreon if you don't want me to eat snakes in real life. And to make sure we finish this video before the end dies of old age, let's get started. Character creation was pretty easy. I chose Bandit for the night. I decided to go for the eye patch look since the beards were offering me mama bear or papa bear options. Too much or too little. We couldn't find a fit that was just right. It wasn't an option, so I went too little, then put an eye patch on, turned it all gray. But even though it looks like Metal Gear Solid 4, it's gonna start like Metal Gear Solid 3 with some skydiving. Into Limgrave, we'll get a crafting kit and sneak our way over to the gatefront ruins. It was the best strategy for not getting noticed. Kill every guard on the way. Eva gives us a horse, of course. Of course, then I sneak back into the camp for the wet blade. This is much more accurate to how I play every stealth action game. Sneak for as long as I can, and then just end up killing everyone without stealth because I got noticed once and was bored. Wet blade acquired. Honestly, a big part of the early game here is just running errands and collecting stuff. It's way more fun running errands with a dog, so thankfully Quiet meets us at a church and gives us some good boys. Then I grab the strength tier, ran past some slugs for the smoldering butterflies. I need to make a grenade later. Sold some stuff for a bit of pop, then touched base at the third church of America. Next, through the mist woods for some fireflies, then the charged attack and stamina boosting physic tiers, and some mushrooms near Fort Height. Grenades also need mushrooms, apparently. I guess that makes sense. They sort of just absorb the flavor of whatever you cook them with. Imagine, solid snake in Fort Height. More likely than you'd think. While the dagger we're using has an innate bleed property, we could push it higher with the bloody slash ash of war. I remember turning dudes into straight up sprinkler systems when I played Metal Gear Solid as a kid, so I definitely want more bleed. Unfortunately, the guard holding the bloody slash Ash of War also has a big ass shield and our dagger doesn't go through that well. Daggers are also bad at crowds. Even a straight sword might hit two enemies in a hit, a dagger does not. After dying twice, I decided to just bail. We'll go kill the dragon without it. On my way, I did some grave robbing, grabbed my pickle, found the booty, got naked for more stamina before going to town on it for a huge load of runes. It might sound like a double entendre and that's because it is. The character is named Solid Snake. I'm a walking dick joke. I used all those runes for vigor. We actually don't need that many stats until later. Thankfully, we don't take another death going through Fort Pharaoh, scooping up the Radigan Sword Seal and making our way out unscathed. Then I grab the sniper rifle from behind a fog door in the round table hold, as well as some rot bolts to poison some bosses down quickly. Still haven't fought a boss yet, and we're an hour into the stream. It's going great, gang. Let's run errands in the Weeping Peninsula now. First, we're gonna buy another cracked pot from another merchant that we can turn into another grenade later. We can get some poison gas with the poison mist spell. It doesn't scale in any way, so the faith requires requirement means nothing. There's a bunch of sacred tiers down here as long as you're in the neighborhood. I popped into the Tomb's Ward catacombs really fast for two grave club warts we're gonna need later. Kaled errands now. Next to the first urge tree, there's a branch stretching out over a bottomless pit. Braving it rewards you with some pot. I scooped up a few Trina lilies for later. We'll need them for sleep darts. And finally, some more pots from a merchant down the road. But the best pot is definitely in Lernia. There's a sacred tier on the way in. Then head to the east near the Carrion study hall and look for some grave to drop down. Welcome to Jarburg. Here you can befriend all the nice living jars and grab some non-living ones. Four cracked pots and one ritual pot. Now we have enough grenades to take on some bosses. Nerd Juice is gatekeeping our first boss and CQC is not our friend here. Daggers are bad for PvP. Sure, Nerd Juice is also using a dagger, but I'm not good at PvP. Worse than a computer even. We still won. For another example of my NPC weakness, here's Patches. He has a big tower shield, but the fight starts off with me just walking up behind him and backstabbing. Daggers have more critical damage so that's great. But I also got critted. This is the closest we've come to dying to patches, but we still didn't. 
I'm not that bad. Patches gives us the disguise we need and the crafting recipe for pickles. With pickles, we can go fight a real boss. The dagger we're using already has quick step, so abandoned cave and its shitty floor aren't a hassle. I grabbed some Aeonian butterflies, thinking we'd be able to use them for rot bolts later, but apparently you can't craft those. Weak. We did all of that running around for the fire pots to make the clean rot knights easier. They're super weak to fire, so I just walk in and start spamming grenades. After all that running around, I only have enough to kill one of them. The second one, I have to fight with a knife. And since since it's not upgraded, this is pretty rough. I could upgrade this one, but there's another knife I want later, and that means going to get more smithing stones, so I'm sticking with this. I called in some backup from the doggies, but after getting rotted, it was pretty much over. I died. Next attempt, I brought the dogs out right away. Somehow, I missed a pot on a knight that was standing still, but we were able to get the first one down. The damage is bad, but we get two crits and finally get that W. We're rewarded with the Golden Scarab Talisman for 20% more runes as we make our way through the game. This is the end of the errands. Now we're ready to play. After farming for butterflies and mushrooms for more grenades. And we saved Bok from a bush to get 10 more mushrooms. Be so cool if we could pretend to be a bush. That would be a total snake move. Now we can start climbing up to Altus. And if I'm climbing a solid snake, you know what music cue is coming. Yeah, we're gonna back, 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 back to the top. Slip and slide and ride that rhythm. The first step is fighting Margot the Fell Ocelot. He really hates us and is gonna wanna fight us over and over again. Just kind of the main rival maybe we'll kiss later. For now, he wants to smash us up with a flurry of fast attacks and I just wanna make him bleed. We have contradicting goals, but I'm the only one who's successful. He's gatekeeping another gatekeeper, Gostok. Gostok is bad at his job and just opens the gate for it, then gets punished by being stabbed to death. With Gostok dead, we don't have to fight the Wind Knight. We can just grab the key and then bail. After crossing the rooftops and avoiding the bird bombs, we have to pass another wind knight I don't fight. I'm heading straight for the Mimic Veil item. I don't know what it does, but it seems crate. It's for players who think outside the box. It's a barrel full of laughs. We'll also pop in behind the fog wall and grab the French knife because it's the best for CQC. The boosted critical hit rate is the best part of using a knife in Elden Ring, and the French knife has a 140 boosted crit rate. Since we haven't upgraded the other knife, we have the stones to push it to plus three right away. There are more stones in Lernia and more pot, a ritual pot. They're like normal pots, but for rarer types of grenades. Then we get the stinky stones, the silver feet, stones by the lobsters, stones by a corpse by some flowers, stones by some other flowers, a golden seed, the dexterity physic tier, more lobster stones, the stones that aren't on the map, and the octopus stones. The Larnia errands take about 12 minutes to get the weapon to plus 9. Might be faster to just grab the bell bearings, I'll lab it out. But I'm also like 3 runs ahead right now, so don't expect it in the next video. Now we'll go down a cliff safely to find our bottom at the cliff bottom catacombs. We have to avoid a bunch of gargoyles and omens to grab the lever, but then we're met with the Urge Tree Burial Watchdog. It's a funky little weirdo with a big sword and a bunch of lasers. I'm using charged and jump attacks to break their stance and open up that watchdog tummy with a big critical hit. Killing it will give me the Ride and Cell Sword Ashes. He's a swordsman, maybe a cyborg. We don't have enough magic to summon him yet, so let's go fight another boss. Godric the Grafted is one of the shard bearers and has the best great rune by far. Even though we're halfway through the safe path, it's much faster and cooler to go through the danger zone. There's even another pot on the way. Godric is pretty easy at this point if you're straight Struggling with him at home, run through Lernia and level up your weapon to plus 9 really helps with the damage. Then find some windows for a charged attack to break his stance. Look at that crit. That's a nice crit. In phase 2, be better than me. Don't get grabbed. Godric's grab doesn't really deal that much damage, but it's good practice for not getting grabbed later. We still won. Hooray. Let's go climb a mountain. Base camp is at Bellum Church, since there's a nice sacred tier there to boost the chug jug and a golden seed on the way to the ruin strewn precipice. It starts off with some thrilling ladders, but this miner was kind of annoying to fight with a dagger. There is a solution though, and it's barreling through the enemies. As a barrel, the Mimic Veil turns you into an object in the environment, making you totally invisible to enemies as long as you're not moving while they're looking at you. We almost got caught after picking up an item, but then I just turned into a wheelbarrow. Bust it. Grab the rest of the items and cheese it. Before taking on the boss for the area, I wanted to farm some pickles, got a sacred seal for the poison gas. Since I didn't change out the flasks though, we had to kill the birds the old fashioned way. Back to the mountaintop, we get glitched out. Raiden, turn the game console off right now. What did you say? That unfortunately counts as a death, but it's only death number four. That's not too bad. To avoid dying again, I became a torch. Turns out you can pick up materials that aren't item without dropping the Mimic Veil, but you can't just walk up to a bat as a torch though. They'll notice that. Bowser time. He's really slow, and you can hit charged attacks on his ass, which will break his stance so you can run around to the face and get a critical hit. With the worm dead, we're able to ride the elevator up to Altus. I want to get higher, but sometimes, to go up, you gotta go down. Yeah. 
But before we go down, let's just kill Gilka super quick. She's incredibly easy and gives us the Ritual Sword Talisman for 10% extra damage when we're at full health. I get it every time. Okay, time for Jaren's party. He's got a crew together to kill Colonel Volgan or Star Scourge Radon. He's already got a bunch of rot in him from his last fight with the boss, so let's rot him up with more rot arrows. The rest of the pals join in and get us a stance break, but I missed the critical hit. Very disappointing since that's kind of the only benefit of using a crappy dagger. He jumps up and I was worried that would mean that he wouldn't have rot in phase two. Several bosses lose status affliction when they start their second phase, but no, he lands and it's still ticking. We eventually get another stance break and finish things off with a taste of critical hit. Killing Volgan hits the world with a massive meteor, so we can get into the underground section of Shadow Moses. But first, let's check in with Quiet again. In Carrier Manor, we find Loretta, and it's a horse boss. Horse bosses aren't great for us, since they can't be critically hit. Still, she's pretty weak after we fought Radon. Before starting the Ronnie quest, I wanted another pot, but I forgot to get the grace, so we couldn't warp back up and had to keep falling down and down. It was a pain in the ass. Now, let's start the Quiet quest. Talk to Quiet, go to Nakron, get the ghost bell bearing on the way to fight Liquid Snake. He's like our Solid Snake, but he's liquid. To beat Liquid Snake, it's best to become Naked Snake, then go back to Solid Snake and block the Liquid Naked Snake's punches for a guard counter. Lots of snakes getting tangled up on themselves. It's a pretty natural instinct when you meet a clone of yourself. I think we should get him to work with us, so we'll head into the Knight's Sacred Ground and can't get into the Mimic Room because I don't have a Stone Sword key. Easy enough to buy one in the Round Table Hold, then I tried to infiltrate. Shit, let's try sneaking again. Oh, yeah, I like that one. I like that one a lot. Thank you, Shelby. Much better. Mimic tier acquired, then we grab the Glove Wart 10 and the Finger Slayer Blade. Typical Ronnie stuff now. Flip the study hall, get the Curse Mark of Death, go to the Einzel River main, grab some Glove Warts, head to Noxtella, steal the bell bearing from behind Phalanx Demon's Holes, Sombra Stone 7, Golden Seed, Glove Warts 8 and 9, then buy the rest of the round table hold thanks to the bell bearings we got. To level up Liquid Snake more, I need some more runes, so we'll take out two putrid avatars. They're basically the same boss. The first one has less HP, so it dies to just some grenades and gives us the flame shrouding physic tier giving us 20 percent more fire damage helpful for the next one which has more hp and more damage despite the buff to our fire damage we only get halfway through its hp before we have to finish it off with the knife now twin snakes is done so it's time for us to climb all the way to the top of mount gelmir and if i'm climbing after twin snakes there is only one song we can use We're back in Aldus and we head right into Mount Gelmnir, grabbing a bunch of volcanic stone along the way. Those are the only mandatory ingredient for volcano pots, which are fantastic incendiary grenades. Just better grenades, basically. Fort Height is fun, but maybe you should try getting Fort Laid instead. Especially if you want the Fire Scorpion Charm, which boosts your fire damage by 12% if you don't mind taking some extra damage. Along the path, there's a bear you can bait into fighting a statue to grab some smithing stone sixes. Kinda nice. Then we find some ladders. Oh, what a thrill. I would climb them in darkness and silence through the night. Then I bought the volcano pot recipe and some explosive grape bolts. But you're so supreme. If we head over to the bridge to the left, it would take us to the volcano manor, but to the right, we can find the volcano cave. I tried to infiltrate as a bush. Mission failed. We'll get him next time. I sprint into the boss room to fight Margot Robbie? Basically just Gilka, but she's got a great acting range. Still, Margot Robbie isn't as good at fighting as Solid Snake, so we take her out quickly and get the jar cannon. Let's see if that works. Let's test it out. Unupgraded! We haven't upgraded that at all yet. Rocket launcher acquired. I'm looking forward to spamming that Nikita. We actually have enough runes to get it all the way up to level nine right away. Nice. Now we can head into the city, at least after we handle the Draconic Tree Sentinel. If you've watched the Shrek and Ivy runs, you know we can just kill him with gas and talk to chat for 15 minutes. But I didn't want to do that this time. So I start with some CQC, then back off to spam the Nikita. Liquid Snake tried to tank, but his HP got nerfed and the Draconic Tree Sentinel hits pretty hard. How dare you kill my 
my clone. I don't have that many left. Well, okay, actually I have plenty. Still, we got Vengeance. Before fighting the Armstrong Shade, I want the Critical Hit Boosting Talisman. To get the Critical Hit Boosting Talisman, I want Sleep Darts. To get the Sleep Darts, we have to go into Raya Lucaria. And to get to Raya Lucaria, we have to fight Smarag. This is a long way to say, here's why we're fighting a dragon with a rocket launcher. To clarify, we're the ones with the rocket launcher, not the dragon. Still cool. It's kind of weird that missiles don't deal stance damage. That's going to be a real problem later. For now, we can ride into Raya Lucaria and buy the Sleep Dart recipe for the first boss of Volcano Manor. The boss for Metal Gear Solid 3, not the boss that we're going to fight, gives us the key that we can use to find a hidden wall and start running through the manor. There is a town inside this house. God, we need to start taxing the rich. I thought there was another jar across the lava, but no, maybe I just missed it. It's kind of funny you can just walk through the lava in this game. I went up the shortcut because the Godskin Noble is not going to be free, even with sleep darts. It takes four to make him fall asleep. That lets us get off a crit. Then we can get another stance break, but his rollout comes out and it hit me four god damn times. Great. Second try goes even worse. Third try goes better than the second, worse than the first. The cannon also wasn't super effective. The noble resists fire damage pretty heavily. If you think you should just use the columns to block the noble, no. He rolls through the columns. He rolls around the columns. You just kind of got to get lucky. Eventually we do. Let's never fight a godskin noble again. I open up the shortcut. Then I mistakenly went through the portal to the audience pathway, not realizing there's no portal back. Fextra Life mentions the portal in the guide to find the crit talisman but apparently you're not supposed to go through it thanks fextra life there's a fog door we have to go through then drop down a bit and enter stealth mode until we get busted <laughs> Then just run away and get the Dagger Talisman for 17% more critical damage. Though, that's according to Fextra Life, so who knows if it's accurate. Time to get our carry on in Snakes in the City. Or is it Snakes and the City? I never figured it out. The Erd Tree Avatar is pretty free. It gives 50k runes and we get a nice level. Come by my stream and cheer for the nice level. The Ritual Shield Talisman is always great for extra defense when you're at full HP, but let's stop doing errands and start doing Senator Armstrong or at least doing a hologram of him. We trade damage with jump attacks and charged attacks before getting a stance break and putting that dagger talisman to the test. And yeah, that's a big old critical hit. Doesn't take much to get the W after that. Someone had a great idea in chat. Put some bleed on the dagger to bleed the bosses. I wish we would have thought of that when Bernal was still at the War Master Shack. Whoops. We have to do a bit of the Volcano Manor quest. Taking out the boss's political enemy is pretty on brand for Snake. Since Bernie isn't in the shack, the bell bearing hunter is instead. He's weak to missiles. Most people are. Istvan is actually a bit of trouble. He has a longer weapon than we do and more poise. Not stance, that's a different thing. Poise is how well you follow through on a hit when you get hit by an attack. Daggers do low poise damage, big swords have big poise defense, the armor gives big poise defense too. We still win though. Now Mommy is happier and Bernie will let us buy the quick step Ash of War, which was already the Ash of War on the dagger. But now we can make it bloody. I died to a black knife assassin on the way to Morgoth. Embarrassing, but we're still only at 10 deaths. Next time, I just shoot a rocket launcher from the bed. It's one of the fun parts of working from home. Morgoth, the Ocelot King, is back and ready to kiss. Or fight. One of the two. I'm doing jump attacks for stance damage as much as I can. Phase 2 begins and things get swampy. But snakes do great in swamps. I think. Probably. Lots of snakes. They do different things. We almost got the kill with a crit, but we have to tickle them a little bit more for the win. Now it's time for another mountain, and I've been teasing you long enough. Here's the song you want. She'll be coming around the mountain when she comes. When she comes. Let's boogie up the Forbidden Lands into the mountaintops of the Giants. Get the Bell Bearing 3, level up that dagger, ignore Realis, get the Sacred Tear, and the Ancient Dragon Smithing Stone. Boom. That was 11 minutes in game time. I did it in 12 seconds for you. Metal Gear Fire Giant Boss. I took off the dagger and tried to get our Liquid Snake to focus on the Rot and the Bleed arrows. It did not. It tried to punch. The old meathead. You're dumb as rigs, ain't So I just tried to get the bleed off myself as much as possible. Phase 2 begins and I... I can't even poison him. He stands still, doesn't get poisoned. I guess his resistances are just bananas high. Things get intense here. I have to avoid two fireballs and the flame breath from his tummy at the same time. The mimic tear dies, but I was able to squeak it out. 
first try victory. We burn down the Erd Tree and head to Faram Azula, scooping up some lightning great bolts before stopping at the comment section Grace and summoning Bernie to help us with the Godskin duo. I start off putting Chunky to sleep so we can fight the skinny one three on one. Liquid Snake wakes it up. Great job, buddy. Then he dies. So I put Chunky to sleep again and things go smoother. We get the rollout, but I'm safe on a pillar and can throw a Volcano Pot for some safe, consistent damage while it's rolling. Skinny comes in and I whiff the crit. Then we have to go two on two. So I put Chunky to sleep and now it's two on one. But Skinny kills Bernie. So now it's mono e mono. I was able to get by with another first try victory, but it was a tight win. They gave us some smithing stone bell bearings so we can max out the knife. Swag jump achieved. I grabbed the Dragon Crest Shield Talisman plus two and began the bird run. This is always a brutal section of the game. It's just kind of a lottery to determine if the birds, dragon, and beast men will let you live. They did. We even got a somber dragon stone for it. Here's the biggest change. I ran past the Draconic Three Sentinel, entered Malekith's arena, and quit out, hoping it would make the Three Sentinel forget about me. Mission success. That's basically stealth. We bring in Liquid Snake and get ready for a furry fight. The short dagger is rough. Malekith has a weird body. It's kind of triangular, so you end up whiffing a lot if you don't have the reach. We got two bleeds off in phase one, then phase two begins, and I bait the flip. We got the stance break and a critical hit, but then Liquid died. We're all alone. Low health. We need to Metal Gear, survive. And we did, but we forgot the pickles. Bubble Bass, forgive me. Now we're in the ruined capital city and might as well head right up to fight an old man. I set some poison up before the backstab crit to kick things off and things got intense. Remember, Dagger is not good for NPCs and Gideon is the hardest NPC, spamming a ton of spells with no magic restriction. He doesn't even have to chug a blue flask. Still, we get some bleed procs off before swapping to the Nikita. That lasts until the Mimic dies, then I've gotta get a few more hits in. His hits are bigger than mine. I almost died to Comment Azur, then used the pillars to block another one. Zero deaths, but it was close. Senator Armstrong is also close, so let's get down to business. Liquid Snake is an absolute beast here, walking up slowly and F-smashing with the rocket launcher. Boom. Then we get a crit, get a bleed, and some stance pressure, so phase two starts off with another crit. The Earthquake is actually one of the best punish windows if you have a ranged attack, so I send in a quick Nikita. Liquid gets grabbed, which I didn't think was possible. Not grabbing the Mimic here, I knew you could do that. Specifically grabbing a Liquid. Try to grab a few fluid ounces. He lives through it though, and charges is in to get the bleed during another earthquake. Complete legend. Let's activate Godric's Great Rune for plus five to every stat and head into the final boss. Radagon is not the most fun for this setup. He doesn't really give you a lot of windows to attack, so you need to make those windows count. Daggers don't really make the windows count. Small damage with small reach to break stance slowly. I actually got lucky and got a stance break, but I guess you can't critically hit Radagon from the back. I always thought you could, but several times this run, I had the opportunity to and it didn't connect. Weird. We got a second stance break right after he sends out an AoE, so I can't get the crit without getting hit. First try, didn't work. Back at it. We finally managed to get a critical hit, and the damage is really good. Then comes the big rune hammer slams that he 180s and actually does twice? I didn't think that was a thing he could do. We didn't die, though, and can start on the Elven Beast. I go for some charged attacks, since the only way we're gonna beat this thing is with a big old critical hit to the tummy. The Mimic Tear dies, and I get a few more charged attacks off, but still no stance break. It sends out the Elden Rain, but it's that one that you can't really dodge by running in a circle. Then I got to dodge the breath, the grab, Elden Stars. Still no stance break. This is a lot. We spent five minutes just fighting the Elden Beast and then missed enough dodges to die. Ran out of time. We'd have to finish it on another stream. Starting again, we get grabbed by Radagon. Bad idea. The grab is pretty brutal. We return the favor though with a critical hit and avoid the hammer slammer for another critical hit. Elden Beast time, we get the stance break and rearrange its guts. Then the rings come, which are pretty easy to dodge as long as there isn't an invisible wall or anything. Ha ha foreshadowing. We get a second critical hit before the Elden Stars come out, then I get to dodge the Elden Rain, the slashes and three rings before Elden Beast pulls out the flurry and I whiff a dodge. That's death number 11, so we're tied with Leonardo. I had the whole rest of the stream left, so fudge it. Let's just go grind. There is a boss I should fight anyway. One more needle drop. <laughs> That's right, baby, it's Rykard time. We've only fought him in one other run since he's a bit tricky without using the boss gimmick weapon. But we've got a rocket launcher, so I bought some lightning rockets right away. To boost the damage, we'll get the arrow sting talisman, which boosts the damage of a ranged weapon attack, like our Nikita. I went to the wrong castle first. What is this, Mario? Now we'll go to another castle, Carry a Manor, for the freezing pot recipe, and some bud to put in our pot. We have plenty of time. I guess we're gonna get really chill. Back to that audience pathway we accidentally went to earlier. 
where we can get ready to fight the Snake Eater. He's weak to cold, so I'm sure he's gonna get Frostbite with one pot and, uh, oh, no, no he doesn't, huh? Well, we've got a plus 10 Jar Cannon, and I'm gonna hit it with a Lightning Rocket, and, uh, huh, yeah, that's not gonna finish both phases in 20 bolts, is it? Honestly, I'm not even sure it's gonna finish phase one in 20 bolts. Well, we get grabbed, then I quit out. It's not a death. I'm just, I, I, I'm not doing it. Uh, you know what, this was dumb. Dump it. Trash it. This one's garbage. I really just wanted the runes to grab more rune arcs, so we'll kill Grail instead. Jump attacks are useful, letting you hit the head, which deals more damage, and stance damage. But he keeps flying away like a dork. Eventually, we do get a stance break and kill it with a critical hit. That's always going to be satisfying. FromSoft really nailed the feeling of stabbing a dragon in the face. Radagon again, we're using the knife, and the Mimic is using the lightning. It's just the way I want it. The Mimic gets grabbed, but that's not me, so it's fine. We keep breaking his stance after he puts a hitbox in front of him. It's so god dang annoying. Liquid dies and we roll through the never ending parade of hitboxes that is Radagon. I got to the Elden Beast, but I only had one healing flask left. Great. Two crits, then Elden Stars, and that's actually fine. The rings become an issue here when there's an invisible wall blocking my path. Hey, here's an idea. Maybe if there's a move where the only solution to avoid it is sprinting in one direction, don't put it in a room with invisible walls and a floor that's indistinguishable from the rest of the floor. Let's do it again. Radagon can be frozen. I have two cold pots, but they both miss. Liquid does get the frostbite off though. I guess it makes sense. Liquid is closer to ice. Get a crit. Mimic tier takes the hammer slammer aggro. Get grabbed, whatever. Elden Beast. Quick critical hit. Run through the rings, early Elden Stars, then the Nebula and the Elden Rain, but the game decided I didn't get to dodge it. Fun! One more try, then I guess we'll grind, maybe? I don't even know where the hell we're gonna do that. The Mimic tier gets the crit, then I get a crit, then the hammers go for the Mimic. That's much better, because it is hard as butts to dodge. Elden Beast. Break stance. Get crit. Avoid rings, avoid grab Elden Stars, but here's the twist. I get greedy. I break the stance mid Elden Stars and use the critical hit invincibility frames to avoid the damage. That's a big brain play. The flurry comes out and it's my least favorite attack to dodge, but I'm able to get through it for another stance break. We get the crit and then I mimic Veil to taunt. I'm a bit rude. Seven hours, five minutes into the game, 26 bosses and 13 deaths. Overall, pretty good. A new record for the longest average time to die, though the average time it took to kill bosses is pretty low. So it ends up in the top of A tier. Having a big critical hit is fun, but you need to put something like Flame of the Red Mains on here to break some stances. Otherwise, you don't get to have fun with your big crit. Mimic Veil is kind of a meme, but it's actually fun. It's just so goofy. And then the Jar Cannon rules. No notes. I guess it can't kill Rykard, but he's not gonna die easily to anything that isn't the Serpent Hunter Spear. You wanna watch these runs live? Follow me on Twitch. We're finding new ways to play Elden Ring all the time. Follow me on Patreon to give me money and sub to my other channel if you like Dungeons and Dragons. Next week, we're gonna make another woman. I wonder which one.